Welcome to the EKG Guy if this is your first time. I'm glad you're joining us and welcome back if you're returning. In this lecture, we're going to go over anteroseptal or anterior uh, MI, especially when it's age indeterminate, meaning we don't know if this is, you know, happened maybe a week ago or even longer ago. Okay, and what the EKG changes we can see on, uh, on them are in this setting. So what you want to do if you don't have access to our coding reference guide is put this link in, enter your email, click submit, and from there you'll get an email. And at that email there will be a link that you can click and it'll give you access. So here's our coding reference guide. There's all these drop down menus. We'll be updating this soon, actually, with uh, more content, but it, it is already quite full. So if you go here and you look at part six, this is where you'll find uh, where we'll be. Okay, so we're going to look at an anterior or anteroseptal MI, okay, or myocardial infarction, and in this case, age indeterminate. Okay, so likely not a very acute um, MI. Okay, so if you also want access to some of our books, our other courses, what we used to teach, go to www.ekg.md, okay, and click on course up here at the top, and there you'll be able to access and see, you know, a number of different resources we have. There's a number of new courses coming out, uh, so stay on the lookout for those as well, but... Um, Again, thank you so much for all your support. I know there's thousands of you that uh, have already bought, so thank you. And I know there's many that are now using in their institution, so we appreciate your support in that way. But let's get started with this lecture. So anterior or anteroseptal MI, or age indeterminate, or probably an old MI, what do we see on the EKG? Okay, so again, just as we've been seeing with the anterior or anteroseptal MI when it's acute, we want to look at specific leads, okay? And really, when we think of the septal leads in the precordial, we think of V1 to V2 generally, okay? And then anterior, you may say V3 to V4. And then lateral, maybe V5 to V6, okay? So these are the precordial leads we're discussing, okay, in their region. And this is how we localize infarcts. Now, when we talk about anterior, okay, if it's anteroseptal, it may involve these, so it may be V1 to V4. Now, you sometimes have spread into adjacent leads, okay, meaning that if you have an anterior infarct, it may be V3 and V4, but you may also have some of V2 and some of V5, okay, those adjacent leads involved as well. So don't be so strict on that. Remember, lead placement is not a perfect science, and these are leads that are placed on the chest, so be very cautious um, with that, okay, and so that's why we sometimes include maybe V2 to V4 as anterior, sometimes it'll be V2 to V5, so uh, hopefully you understand why that's the case, okay. All right, so in this case, we're looking at anteroseptal, so anyways, V1 to V4, okay, and in these leads, what do we want to see? Well, again, this is not an acute one so we don't want to see so no st elevation okay but you want to see pathological q waves okay and another finding that you'll want to look at for these anterior so the whole anterior portion of the left ventricles involved the anteroseptal portion so you'll likely also see poor r wave progression okay so that's one thing to keep in mind so again no evidence of acute or evolving MI, so no ST elevation, no injury pattern that you're seeing. Uh, you want to see the pathological Q waves, remember, and these, again, you want to localize it to those leads V1 to V4. So here's V1, V2, V3, V4. <clears throat> and notice that you have these deep Q waves right here, okay? Notice them all here. And they're deep and they're also wide. So the width we usually want at least 30 milliseconds. So if you imagine a complex here, the width of it from beginning to the end of the Q wave should be at least 30 milliseconds, okay? And the depth, we say, should be at least one millimeter, okay? So the depth of it. But generally, it tends to be a little deeper than that. So 
Uh, and I personally a little cautious of just saying one millimeter as sufficient, okay? Especially when you're just beginning and you're seeing some maybe septal depolarization and you're noticing Q waves maybe in the lateral leads, but that's actually normal because of the left bundle branch uh, depolarizing that septal portion, okay? So really look for deep, wide Q waves. This is what you're going for here, okay? No evidence of that injury pattern of the ST segment elevation and localizing to v1 through v4 okay so hopefully that makes sense there so notice we also mentioned poor r wave progression so notice normally we should have r waves from v1 to v4 or v5 you should have an increase in r wave amplitude okay that initial r wave in addition you should have an increase in the r to s ratio so notice in these, you have pretty much absence of R waves here. No R waves. And now starting to see it maybe in uh, V4, V5-ish range. Okay, so quite late. Normally, you want to see that earlier on. Uh, for instance, if you imagine this is V1, V2, V3, V4, and V5, we should see somewhat maybe uh, imagine that you have a complex like this. And then maybe in V2, you have a bigger R wave. So this is the initial R wave. Imagine this is another R wave here. And then imagine in V3, it's a little larger. And then in V4, even larger. And in V5, okay. So notice that the R wave is going increasing in amplitude. We call that normal R wave progression. And no, notice at the same time, the S wave amplitude is decreasing, okay, and almost gone in V5. That's normal, where you have an increase in the R to S ratio as well. So that's what we call R wave progression, and that's something that is often absent in the setting of an anteroceptal anterior MI. So again, just to review, an anterior or anteroceptal MI Again, if it's age indeterminate or probably old, what we look for before coding this on the EKG is we look for absence of ST segment elevation to know it's not an acute injury pattern, but we're looking for that poor R wave progression in the anteroceptal leads as well as these pathological Q waves that are there, okay, V1 through V4. So make sure uh, that makes sense, okay? So these are the findings here, the pathological Q waves, poor R wave progression, no ST segment elevation in those leads as well. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available. So again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, okay? So this is our website. And what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here, over here. So you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so, and that's more on YouTube. There's another 100, more than 100, about 200 videos that are available with the course. So those are separate videos, and this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter, okay? so completely separate from what you're getting online for free, okay? These are um, course material that comes with it. So notice that you have a book, okay? And then you also have the pocket guide available. So you can choose which format. They are the same thing, both these uh, book and the pocket guide, uh, different formats. Uh, I really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go. Now with the book, you also get videos. So notice these are the videos, okay? And these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there, okay? We'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic. And it's used now among many institutions. So use, uh, check that out. Now, what it also includes are calipers. So yes, you get calipers with this course, okay? 
Um, I don't know anyone else that offers that, but you do get calipers. I think they're very helpful and they can, uh, you know, if you know how to use them correctly, uh, can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on. Okay. And then you also get our pocket EKG reference. Okay. This was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows. Uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there, very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic in editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the EKG course. You'll see examples of lectures, okay, why we developed this, okay. A lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs, having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and, you know, still struggling. So uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them, okay. You can read all those introductory books, but honestly, they are not uh, enough, okay. And you find yourself using other resources, which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself... Um, 25% off that will even, it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right. Have a great day.